This is Ask the Mayor on KWBE. Each Thursday morning, we talk about city government. Mayor Bob Morgan off on other things today. We welcome in city administrator and Board of Public Works manager Tobias Templemeyer. Thanks, Tobias, for coming in today. Appreciate Absolutely. It. Thank you, Doug. Uh, I hate almost to bring this up as the uh, first topic because every time I talk about this, it's kind of Sports Illustrated jinx. You know, things change. But uh, here we are, uh, well, a week away from the official starter winner today, I think. And we've had, what, one small snow squall and maybe a little bit of icing for a preemptive de-icing coating or something. But you keep going like this, the snow budget's going to be in pretty good shape, won't it? It will be. So we're, you know, we're knock on wood. Hopefully that's the way things hang out for us here. But uh, street department's ready for that first snow uh, whenever it shows up. Yeah. They've got all their... Um, a salt or anything already purchased and in the, in the shed waiting to be used. And mm-hmm. uh, we have some money budgeted every year for the emergencies. You know, we don't ask for it to snow on Saturdays or Sundays. Trust me, <laughs> the guys have better things they'd rather go do. Uh, but it always seems the way it kind of works out for them. Uh, but yeah, we have our money budgeted. We're ready to go and the trucks are ready and mm-hmm. the guys are just sitting around waiting. Do you remember at all since you've been here the least amount you've ever spent on a winter as far as clearing and ice and sand and stuff like that? Or I do not. I don't remember, and I, and I don't know a number for you. Yeah. Uh, but because every year we, we we budget to purchase the salt and that kind of stuff, and then and, and Jason just kind of waits and see how much he actually needs and mm-hmm. orders it. You know, in June, July time period mm-hmm. uh, when people aren't thinking about salt and sand, he he is, and so he's <laughs> make sure that we're ready for the next year. This year, I know he was talking earlier about. Uh, computer equipment they put in trucks to sort of track a little better what how much material they use and here we don't have winter so he's kind of waiting to try it out here so it'll be interesting to see though how that affects things in terms of the budget yeah it will be and you know another, again another way that we can try to be more efficient and if we don't need to cover a road so many times or if there's a more efficient way to to have the, the trucks go around the city we're looking for it okay well, we'll talk about several things today. One that uh, hasn't come up for a while, but it's a big project that's out there, and that's a new landfill construction uh, south of the current uh, facility beyond the highway spur there. Um, it's not something where you all of a sudden decide, hey, we want a new landfill and move dirt the next day. You have to go through quite a lengthy process. At what stage of that process are you at right now? We're in the preliminary design phase at this point. Uh, you're correct. It's one of those entities out there that nobody ever thinks about. Mm-hmm. Nobody gives me much thought to. I mean, I put my trash out this morning, and when I come home at noon, it'll be gone, and that's about the last time I'll think about trash uh, for most people. <laughs> uh, but, yes, yeah, so it's quite a process there. Uh, we've got an engineering firm on staff, and, and they're out working with the state. One of the things we're doing on this particular design was it, could we go lower in the cell, excavate more dirt, and add more uh, airspace, uh, so we've been making sure we got that approval from the state of Nebraska uh, and, and working through that process as we go forward with the design phase. I look for the design to probably be finished up sometime in the early part of 2024. Mm-hmm. Look for bids sometime in, you know, that late uh, summer, early fall period of 2024. Uh, and we're hoping to have the cell open for construction in 25. It is split into areas that you develop as you go along. Is this uh, facility expected to be much larger than the one you had in terms of the number of uh, cells that you can construct over time, or how does it compare? You're right. You build it in cells. Uh, uh, this site, we're looking to probably ser- be able to serve the city and the surrounding area for about 70 years, uh, give or take a few uh, either way. Um, obviously, you don't want to dig that big of a hole all one time yeah. because you know, when you dig a big, giant hole and it rains, it, it fills up with water. <laughs> We've experienced that one. So <laughs> you, you do try to make it in cells. So it kind of, you know, five or 10 year cell, and you kind of just keep going through those. But area-wise, it's about the same as the current landfill. Uh, mm-hmm. Current landfill's been there for about that long, and so uh, it'll be similar size. How much time left on the current uh, facility? Are you stretching that limit in terms of having to get out of there, or do you have some room left? We've got some room left in the current facility. We can go through probably 2025 with it. There's also been some settling over time, and so the cap of the current landfill is lower than the, what we're allowed to go to. Uh, so you could go up there. Now the downside, obviously, the higher up you go, the more wind you catch, and then your your plastic bags and paper and everything else starts to blow around. And so um, we're trying to be strategic as to what type of trash we put in what locations to help avoid some litter issues. Back a few years ago when you changed from a bailing system to trash compacting with a big machine, has that worked out pretty well for you? It has worked for us. We've gotten better compaction. Mm-hmm. Uh, so again, if we can t- uh, squeeze in the trash into a smaller space, it leaves more airspace uh, to be used for uh, other trash. We've also gone to some different alternative daily covers. So every day we have to cover the landfill. In the past, we just used strictly dirt or wood chips. Mm-hmm. And uh, we've gone to some other al- options. 
which again, take up less space, which allows more space for trash uh, for future years. Okay. Uh, you have kind of a related item coming up on the uh, council agenda next Monday. Obviously, you need customers. You have the residential customers and businesses in town for the landfill, but also you go to other communities and things. I understand you have another uh, potential hauling contract coming up. Correct. We've been talking to uh, the village of Odell, and I believe village board, I think, was supposed to vote last night. I haven't heard exactly how that vote went, but I think things were moving positively. Uh, they reached out to us about having another hauler come down and, and pre- present them a quote or a bid, and we did that. Uh, we were already down in that area. Uh, what it does then allows us to pick up more rural customers in that area as well. Mm-hmm. Again, we weren't but a couple miles away from there, so it made sense to, to hop over and pick up another 100 customers or so. How many communities or kind of rural areas do you have now? Because that's kind of grown over time. I think most of them have been north and west of here for the most part. Correct. But, uh, you know, most of our fo- footprint is north and west of here. We don't go south very far. Uh, we go east a little ways, but not, uh, you know, mm-hmm. 10 miles or so. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, th- was, you know, trying to think of the number of villages we have right now. We're probably somewhere in that six to seven range that comes to the top of my mind. Mm-hmm. Any others that are on the horizon that you think you may pick up depending on how negotiations go? Yes, there's always more that we're looking at. There's always some that have contracts that come up in you know another couple of years or so, and we stay in communication with those and, and those co- communities and let them know that we'd certainly be interested. Again, usually because we're within a mile or two of their town already, mm-hmm. and it just makes sense for us to see if we can't pick them up as a customer. Uh, before we take a break here, kind of an update on uh, Hannibal Park. Uh, some work's been going on out there, as I understand. I haven't driven out there lately, but what's kind of the status of that? That's been the focus of... Uh, you know, a naming rights and uh, advertising thing to help support some of the changes out there. Yeah, we've had a lot of improvements going on at Hannibal Park, powered by Pinnacle Bank. Uh, If you've been out there lately, uh, Field 4 and 5 got new backstops. Uh, Those were older than we'd like to remember, Uh, but those (laughs) had to get, we got those redone. We've got a a sidewalk or a trail now that connects the entire complex to make everything ADA compliant Mm -hmm. um, and accessible to people out there. And now it's working on getting the rest of the fencing put up for those particular fields and get those those done. And then we're going to sit back. I know the engineering department's out right now doing a full topo survey of the entire area. Uh, we know what improvements we want to make, but we want to take a survey of everything and kind of have a master plan in place of how we want to do uh, each part and what what's the right steps to do those in. I think at one time, weren't you considering like a a field where the parking area is right now or kind of an adjustment there? Is that still possible? Yes, that's something we're still looking at is adding an eighth field out there. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first thing we probably knew is build, build the parking off to the west um, and then come back and work on building that new field down there by the concession stand kind of area is. I know the Girls Softball Association has some improvements they would like to make to the concession area and some of those. We're talking to those, them and see what they want. Um, YRI, we're also working with them to see exactly what kind of improvements they're looking for out in, the, in that area. Uh, So it's kind of a group effort, uh, and we're very thankful for all of our sponsors. You've had uh, a lot of success working with a consulting firm uh, based in, I think, near Des Moines, Iowa, uh, regarding naming rights, sponsorships, things like that, at various levels that businesses can contribute to. Uh, Are you coming to the end of that? It was a three-month agreement or whatever? Or it's a year-long agreement. Oh, a year-long, okay. I'm thinking of the other one, I guess, the other with the federal. Right, yeah, this this one's a a year-long agreement, and I think – you know, we'll get it done. We'll see how it looks. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, whether you like it or not, our parks have been very clean. There has not been a lot of advertising in them. It's mm-hmm. kind of become the normal, uh, the norm out there on different facilities. And so we'll see how people like Hannibal Park when it's done and mm-hmm. see if it's something we want to then continue over to some other facilities. Or we make it done and go, yeah, we just don't like all that advertising in our parks. Yeah. Uh, stay with more of the, the, the clean look. And so... What's the total up to now? I'm trying to remember. As far I, as donations uh, over a set period of years into the... I, I believe we're somewhere around four hundred, four hundred fifty thousand wow. dollars in commitments. It takes care of quite a bit of improvements. Yes, it does. That's one way to take some pressure off the property taxpayer. I That's guess. right. Okay, Tobias Templemeyer, City Administrator, Board of Public Works Manager, with us today on Ask the Mayor. Back on Ask the Mayor today, our guest is Beatrice City Administrator and Board of Public Works Manager Tobias Templemeyer. You've had a lot of success getting uh, community development block grants for downtown improvements with a combination of uh, the grant funds and then the private businesses kicking in to help improve their storefronts and things like that. You have another one. We do have another one. We are currently finishing up the third grant that we have, and we were able to go out and acquire yet another, a fourth grant for the downtown area. 
Uh, that grant will be for approximately $400,000 of improvements into the downtown. It requires a match about 25%, so another $100,000. So, you know, we're looking for another round of improvements through our community uh, in the downtown buildings. It's pretty early on in that process, but have you had any letters of interest or uh, potential business properties that want to jump on board this time? This we group? did. So before we apply, we a lot of times ask for some pre-applications so mm -hmm. we can show the state that there's a an interest in the program. And I think we had roughly 30 pre-applications that were filed uh, mm -hmm. when we uh, applied the first time. So uh, we'll certainly reach out to those property owners and then go out and see if there's any others that are interested in partaking in this program. Is it all storefront improvement or as you get these grants, do the does the criteria change any that you can add other types of improvements or things like that? Or what's the regulation on that, I guess. So the state changes their uh, requirements every time. <laughs> so sometimes they focus just on facades and the next times it's more code compliance and then sometimes it's ADA. Uh, this uh, last go around, the one we're finishing up, they liked upper level living units. Uh, this time they don't. Huh. And so this time it's more of a facade improvement kind of program with some code uh, issues. And so uh, we'll look, make sure we look towards those types of improvements uh, for this go around. Seems like the conventional thinking would be if you get one or two of these grants that maybe your luck wouldn't be as good the next time because other communities obviously want to get a piece of the pie, so to speak. But uh, were you surprised at all you've gotten this many in succession, kind of? They've, there's been a very short period of time between each of these programs. I was very surprised we got this one. Uh, I figured, again, like you said, that kind of it wasn't our turn mm -hmm. you know I figured we're, we still have an open one that we're still wrapping up I didn't think they'd give us another one uh, but you know thank you to send they wrote the grant for us this time did a wonderful job and I think we you know with the pre-applications we showed a need and I think the property owners having stepped up the last couple times and put some major improvements into the facades and their buildings I think it showed the state that the city of Beatrice is ready to move forward and make some changes I wish I had photos of each section of downtown from 15 years ago and then now because it would be nice to see kind of a side-by-side -side thing of what it looks now and what it looked like then. I would imagine there's been quite a few changes. I, I would think so as well. I, I know that Amanda does a great job for us sitting out some of those photos and we're mm -hmm. doing a better job of getting before and after photos. But mm -hmm. yeah, there are some buildings that have undergone some significant changes and improvements uh, in our community. Okay. Uh, one of the things that you have under your jurisdiction for the first time in your new biennial budget is uh, operation of the airport. You used to have an airport authority and uh, still have an airport advisory board, but now it's under your budget. Uh, how is that going for you? And I know they have some projects that are on the drawing board. I think they had an apron project and maybe something to do with the, uh, the fuel island, uh, maybe some hangar space. How far along are those things at this point? So I think the, the transition has gone very well. I think everybody's figuring out how it works and I think it's been very efficient for everybody. Mm -hmm. uh, we just had a meeting the other day with, with Dennis, the airport uh, manager out there, talking about some of the things that the city, now, that he can take and slide over to some other city departments and get some help from them. You know, simple things like we all buy fuel now. So he doesn't have to have his own fuel contract and pay a different price. He now can fall under our contract and get a lower price and save some money. Um, you know, we've been able to remove the property tax levy for the airport because of being the map part of the city and some of the efficiencies that we can offer them. So those, that side has been very well. They do have an apron project. Uh, we are waiting. We've, so the federal government has to sign off on the transition from the airport advisory authority board to the advisory board. Uh, we are about a year into that and I think seven submissions of the same form. So very slowly. Don't you just work. love dealing with those things? <laughs> it, uh, it's very slowly working its way through whatever federal uh, room it's in or office is in right now. Mm -hmm. uh, but once that gets done, I think that you'll see that taxiway work get done. We do have a, um, some money here, um, coming from Senator Fisher's office to help us with uh, some, ape, or excuse me, some, uh, a new hangar out there. Mm -hmm. And so we're working on that project as well. And then we do know we have some other hangar improvements that we need to make and for the airport, and we're trying to make sure we get those kind of budgeted in over the next couple of years. Uh, how much does lease income uh, deal with the budget out there? You, you mentioned not having the property tax backing of it anymore. I know you have the fuel sales and things like that, but how big of a component is lease income out there? Their lease income for the airport's their most significant uh, line of revenue that they have. I see. Uh, you know, fuel sales are, are good, but they're not, you know, not carrying a majority of their of their um, their burden out there. It's mostly comes from the lease property that they own. Okay. Now the improvements like the apron and fuel, are those like FAA grant things you get, or is that something you finance or how does that work? 
So the apron project we have out there is an FAA grant. It's a 90-10 split. So the federal government picks up 90% of that cost. Mm -hmm. um, on that particular project, they're telling us now that the um, fuel island may not be eligible. So that may have to not be part of the grant and the city may have to finance that one on our own. We're still working through that particular issue. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, the federal government comes through with a grant for various improvements out there and they're usually a 90-10 split. I see. One more thing before I take another break here, uh, kind of an update on between Riverside Park and Homestead National uh, Historical Park Heritage Center. Uh, the goal is to have a trail connecting those two areas uh, in the future. Where are you at on that right now? So we received a grant from uh, the state of Nebraska for that particular trail section. And that again is about an 80-20 split on for that particular project. The National Park Service has helped out with a, a significant contribution for that trail. And they'll cover about 50% of our 10% or, or excuse me, our 20%. So they'll, they'll cover a significant portion of that. We've got some preliminary design work done. We're hoping, uh, talk to the engineers this week. They're hoping to have a about 30% plans, what they call it, uh, submitted to us within the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. And then we're looking for probably an onsite visit in January. So, you know, always fun to go out and walk a, a three mile <laughs> construction site in January, but <laughs> we'll bundle up for that one. Yeah. Um, We'll hope to do that sometime again in January and, and do uh, start that process again. I think you're looking at though construction is probably 25 or 26. South side of the highway, is that still the plan? Still looking at south side of the highway. Mm -hmm. uh, the biggest change has been that we noticed that the state of Nebraska had a project next year to start replacing bridges along Highway 4. And we just asked the question, well, while you're replacing them, can you add a trail section onto it? rather than having the highway bridge and then over another 20 feet was the trail bridge. Mm -hmm. And the state of Nebraska looked at it and agreed that that would be something they'd be able to do. And obviously there's some you know, cost sharing has to go on, which is understandable, but mm -hmm. um, hopefully that prevents us from having, you know, six separate bridges out to the, the homestead and back and people wondering why, why we didn't cooperate <laughs> a little bit better. I was trying to remember how many bridges there are, I, or stream crossings there that you would have had to put your separate trail across. Is it six? Or is uh, it's it? three of them. Three of them. Yeah. Okay, so a significant expense, though, if you had to do it, go at your own. Correct. Farther away. More right-of-way, perhaps? It, like that's that. just it, yes. That mm -hmm. would then impact the amount of right-of-way you have to have and, mm -hmm. and then where the trail alignment comes. And so that's why we don't have a finalized plan yet because that state just approved that here in the last month or two. So that sent the engineers back to redrawing mm -hmm. how that trail then lays through there. Tobias Templemeyer, our guest today on Ask the Mayor, will be back to wrap up our program next. We're back on Ask the Mayor today with City Administrator and Board of Public Works Manager Tobias Templemeyer. A few things left to talk about today. This past year was the year of the water main in uh, downtown Beatrice, and uh, obviously that always creates a little bit of inconvenience for people, but it all came out pretty well. I think you got, what, a little bit of tap replacement or an installation to do on East Court, and then that's it? That's Correct. It? That's it. I mean, we're down to just a, a last few minor issues and trying to get those wrapped up here as quickly as possible. You know, Myers has done a good job, but they're ready to go off to their next projects. Yeah. Uh, you know, those guys come in from Broken Bow, so they're away from their family for quite some time, and they're ready to go home and spend some time with their wife and kids. Mm -hmm. uh, but, yeah, I think the project's gone overall generally well. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, there's always a few hiccups here and there and always some things we can do better the next time and, and learn from. Uh, but, you know, we're excited to get that project done. It's never fun, but it was one that was needed and been on the drawing board for a long time. Had some curb replacement and sidewalk replacement out in that area east of downtown too correct and i think that turned out great i think the contractor did a wonderful job i think it looks beautiful uh, but we're preparing for that mill and overlay project that the state's planning on next year for highway 136 at least that will be a shorter duration won't it likely <laughs> the, the mill and overlay it should be a shorter duration it's still yeah. gonna be an inconvenience when it occurs yeah. um, you know the once it's done then you gotta worry about the street painting and all those other things that come with it so it'll take a little bit of time but you know not nearly as long as this water main project the other project on US 77 was farther into the future. Was that the following year or is that beyond that? I, I believe remember. that project, Highway 77, is looking at, I think, 27 or 28. I see. Okay. And that's uh, from what point to what point? I think we're down to Industrial Row through town, I believe, is I what's see. left. So I'd be out toward the bridge then. Yeah. It heads out into the rural area then. Wow. Big project there, too. So a lot of things going on the next few years. Correct. Uh, other things, uh, an update on your comprehensive plan. Uh, I think that was mentioned the last council meeting about the need to do that. People might not know 
what is a comprehensive plan and why do you need to update it? As, uh, how long ago did you last address that? So our comprehensive plan, it, it's old. It's older than we'd all like to, to think it is. Um, you know, I think it was written sometime in the 80s. It's been updated a couple of times. The last update, I think, was 2015, and that was just an energy component that was added in there uh, for some state law that said you had to add it. Mm -hmm. What the comprehensive plan essentially is is the master plan for the city. How does the city look at growing in the future? Are you going to grow north? Or are you going to look to grow south? So then you start laying out, so, okay, if we're going to grow north, what kind of zoning should we have? What roads should be upgraded? and made to be bigger roads with wider right-of-ways and which roads can be smaller, more local roads. Start having some of those thoughts and plans so that as you start to develop, you can have that in mind and know how to set everything up. And unfortunately, again, ours is just you know, a little bit older mm -hmm. and some things we've followed in there and some things we haven't just because over 30 or 40 years, things kind of change. And uh, so it's good. It's a time for us to go update it. However, to update a, a comprehensive plan is 50 to $100,000. Yeah. On commercial growth, what's the, what's the projection? Where do you think most of the growth will be next 10 years, 15 years? You know, if I'm looking at my crystal ball, I think it's north, right? Yeah. I mean, most, you've got Lincoln. It's a huge magnet. It's growing, pulling most everything to that northern mm -hmm. uh, portion of, the, of our community. And so, again, we need to look at it and say, okay, well, then what do we need to put for water mains out there? And how do mm -hmm. I put my electrical out there? And I want to make sure that if I put a sewer line that here that it, I don't have to replace it next year when that growth comes in or 10 years from now, a little bit of pre-planning. Yeah. Uh, you have one new business out toward the high school, which has uh, been built out there. Any prospect that the East might be second most developed in terms of commercial or residential? Yeah, I think in the near term, I think the East looks uh, very promising. Mm -hmm. you know, with the, the school going in out there and continued development out that way, I think what the, the Heidos did with their gas station, I think shows people that uh, there's some draw out there. Uh, again, you have places like Bumgars and, and the grocery store and that kind of stuff that's kind of anchored East Court Street for years now. Mm -hmm. And so I think you'll continue to see growth there in the near term. Okay. Uh, renovation work at the Municipal Auditorium. I was looking at, I haven't dropped down to look at them yet. I was going to do that, but you have new scoreboards in the, on the gym floor. But there's been some other things going on too, hasn't there? Th there has been. So, you know, obviously we have the new tenants and they've taken care of their stuff downstairs. But in the auditorium portion, when people come in for Mudecus next month, uh, they'll see new scoreboards in there uh, and then new uh, padding on the walls behind the, uh, the basketball hoops. Mm -hmm. uh, the old padding was a little old and had been there for, again, decades. Not much padding anymore, probably. <laughs> no, it was not. And so we're very lucky to, and fortunate to have somebody who was willing to donate some money and put some new padding up, mm -hmm. and it looks very sharp. It uh, looks very nice in there. But, again, just one of those, you, a little bit each, you know, each year kind of mm -hmm. helps make that, that place look nice and remember what kind of a gym it is for our community. The lighting in the gym, was that improved too, or is that in still in progress? I or? believe that one is still in progress. I know uh, public properties are, are working on that portion, but I, it might still be in process, but I know that that's something they've been working on. Okay. Uh, one of the things that, and you mentioned electric, uh, one of the things that uh, Pat Feist had recently mentioned was some work uh, at Southeast Community College in terms of their welding facility out there. Heard this week on Tuesday that I think that welding building was supposed to be coming in, the equipment on it, and they were getting set to do some more work on that. Is that a pretty big project in terms of the connection it, there? It is. It's a, you know, a significant improvement. And we're always happy to see Southeast Community College make improvements to their facility out there and, and, and welding something that all of our local industries need mm -hmm. and it certainly could use more of. And so we're happy to do our part. I know Pat and his guys have got their work in out there and, and that mm -hmm. project's wrapped up, but it'll be a good, a good addition to the community. I think they have two welding centers, a big one on the Lincoln campus and then this one too. So try to space out where the training's at. So I suppose companies have better access to that then. Right. Um, as we wrap up today, just kind of a quick thing on, I know this has been in the discussion for some time, stormwater and drainage studies. I know you've talked about the one out east around 19th and then Hannibal in that area. I think there's one in the industrial park, I believe. And then a third one in the Belvedere area. At what stage are kind of those things right now? So we've done the study in the industrial park, and we've got a good idea what we need to do. We're applying for another grant to help us actually build in the detention facilities in that location. Uh, and that'll help then when companies out there grow, they can use all of their ground for growth and use our ground for their stormwater detention, I see. Uh, which is required by federal law. You got to have some stormwater detention. And the one on the east side of town and the one in Belvedere, 
you know, those obviously run through residential neighborhoods, they're built out, but what can we do to help eliminate or reduce some of the flooding concerns that are in those locations? Those studies are currently just getting started. Uh, we are working with signing the contract with the consultant here, hopefully within the next two weeks. And then you'll see those studies get kicked off. And I think they've got you no know, nine months or so to get those completed. The one in South Piatras down by Belvedere, since I used to live in that area, it seems like it's more of what a backyard flood problem. Is that what it boils down to? It yeah. is. Unfortunately, when that area was uh, set up and platted years ago, uh, they did not plat anything through there for that storm water. They didn't think about it. So, yes, it runs through back you know, yards of people. Mm -hmm. uh, the city doesn't own an easement. We don't have anything like that to go in and be able to do some work. Uh, so we're going to study and see what kind of improvements need to be made. And then obviously we'll have to talk to some property owners and see what uh, improvements we can make. Does it look like that's something that can be handled with, you know, sometimes you see these concrete kind of canals that sort of funnel at least the water where it needs to go toward the river rather than through somebody's basement. Is that one possibility or something or... You know, I think if uh, engineers have their way, they don't like to put those, those concrete channels quite in quite as much anymore. Yeah. Uh, they like to make it a little more artistic, mm -hmm. uh, make it look, you know, look uh, some ditch check, checks, some of those types of things that help slow the water down mm -hmm. uh, so it doesn't erode quite as much. But mm -hmm. yes, there are some things that we can do. Uh, the difficult part in the one in Belvedere will be it's all located on private property. I see. But if it's done, it makes it easier for people to mow their backyard on a regular basis too. Correct. <laughs> because it floods out quite a bit, so... Uh, Tobias, thanks for being with us. Appreciate you coming in. Thank you.